The US military used to fight against IEDs with an ammo box and some glow plugs. How did they do it? Why did they do it? Let's get into it. In 2003, soldiers had absolutely no idea what to expect. Soldiers were trained on how to fight the enemy, but they were learning as they went, how to do urban warfare, how to drive their vehicles in the proper formations. But then soldiers started to see weird things appear. Pepsi cans with cords coming out of them, designed to pop the tires of Humvees. This became the origin of the IED. And don't worry, this is all unclassified information. In fact, seeing this today on a battlefield is almost laughable. Now in Iraq, militia groups realized that a Pepsi can is not going to stop their opponents. So they started recruiting scientists, doctors, engineers. How can they make that Pepsi can really take out a vehicle? This little thing right here took out tons of US military members and tons of US military pieces of equipment. It's an infrared detector. And quite simply, you'd be driving along the road, that detector would sense the heat signature of the engine of whatever vehicle, and it would ignite the IED. But this sensor took the IED to four dimensions. Originally, you would typically use an anti-tank mine, the vehicle goes over it, boom. But now with the sensor, you could take a mine or whatever you want, place it in the ground, place it side to side, place it above you. It became a super threat to the US military. But as the origin story goes, there was a soldier out there who said, what if we take a blow dryer, put it on a stick in front of our vehicle, and that will be the heat signature for the IED. Unfortunately, the blow dryer did not come with the pretty woman. Now, this is a very important picture. Soldiers started to take long poles, sometimes wooden poles, put an ammo box at the end of the pole, and put something hot in that box. There are stories of soldiers just starting fires in the box, putting hot coals in that box, so the IED would take out the ammo can and not the truck. But the US government finally caught on and started creating their own long poles with a hot box on the end of them, and they called it the Rhino Passive Infrared Defeat System or the Rhino, as every other soldier would call it. However, by the time the Rhino came out, those scientists and engineers have already figured out a way to defeat the Rhino system. It's called just tilting their IEDs a little bit more, changing a few little electronics, and it would defeat the Rhino. But then we figured out, hey, if they're gonna tilt their system, let's make our poles longer. Now, as you can see, IED versus counter IED operations is like a cat and mouse game. What happened to the Rhino? It went outdated very fast. You see those IED makers, they went to radio tech and now they're onto some pretty crazy things. But as a former combat engineer and learning about IED operations and route clearance, I am very thankful for those original engineers who paved the way to make my life a little more easier.